Isso aqui, oh, oh, é um pouquinho de Brasil, ya yeah, yeah. Hi. Um, I bought 3.5 pounds of blue face last year and because I want to decide what color I'm going to dye it, I hand dyed a little bit of the, the top and I spun it in um, Navajo with, and I applied it with Navajo ply so that I could see the colors. I don't know if I'm going to do it in this blue, but I really like the the darkness of this blue. And what I did is I used a, a mix of a purple dye that I had, that the purple was not very nice with a blue, and I decided I'm going to dye this fiber here. Um, I believe this fiber is a targi. My friend gave it to me, um, and it's full of vegetable matter. The targi will definitely get the color different than the, the blue face luster, but, uh, because it's a small project, I think it's going to be great. And I'm going to use that blue to dye this. And let's see how it's going to work. Okay? So today, I remember to use my gloves just not to get my fingers all colored. And normally, you should use, I have like, let's say 400 grams of fiber here. And normally, you should have 30 times uh, the amount of water for the amount of fiber the weight of fiber that you have but i don't have that much of uh, that big pot that i can use on my wood stove so i put as much water as i could find here and what i'm going to do is i like to, to dye in the fiber because it doesn't really matter um if you if it doesn't get homogeneous because when you card it or when you comb it it will work better right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start adding salt and i have one cup of salt to two cups of water and i'm going to put here 10 percent of the amount of fiber that i have so if i have 400 grams, I'm going to use 40 milliliters of this and I'm putting in the water, just mixing it a little bit. What the salt does is it helps the, um, the dye go more homogeneously into the fiber. So I did this, I'm going to put it back here. And now I'm going to measure the dye. So you, when you prepare a solution of dye and you use the same amount um, of the color, so normally what they say is if you have 400 grams of fiber, you're going to use 400 ml of dye. So it's the same. And this is uh, what we would call depth of color. Now, because I want it darker, and I know that when you hand paint, it tends to be darker than when you uh, do that, I'm going to put, I'll try to see if I have enough for two uh, depth of color. That means two, um, 800, mls of dye. I'm going to try and measure here just to see how big my my cup is. How much I can put in there. So I have 50. Just want to make it easier so that I don't have to keep measuring with the syringe. Okay, let me put this back because I have foam in it. Okay, let me get here 50. 
This is good. So I have a hundred in, in yell in here. And a hundred in L is giving me a little bit shorter than the than the half a cup. So since I know that, I'm going just to put here a hundred. Two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, and six hundred. And I'm going to stop here and I'm going to use instead 1.5 depth of color because I think this is good enough. So normally when you uh, mix two colors together, you have to be careful because sometimes the fiber will absorb one color before the other and you're not going to get an homogeneous color anyway because of this thing that happens naturally. But in this case, because they're both base blues, I think it's gonna be okay. Normally, like if you, if you do a purple um, by mixing blue and red, it can have this difference in absorption of the dye because uh, blue is a color that tends to be absorbed last by the fiber. Okay, so I do have my fiber here, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the fiber in. You can see the, the locks. And I'll let it soak in this water and warm up. And after the water is a little warm, then I will put the citric acid. If I were doing the dye with uh, vinegar, I would have already put the water to soak in vinegar. And the reason you put the water to soak, uh, the fiber to soak before you dye, is because if the fiber is, is dry, it's going to absorb the, the dye differently. So by letting it soak in the water, you have more chances of having the fiber to absorb it uh, more homogeneously, if that's what you want. So that's what I'm doing here. Also, um, some people tell you to use um, some detergent in the water when you are uh, letting it soak. So I think it's, I forgot the name of the, the product that, that they use. But in reality, that is a detergent that you put together. The, the goal of the detergent in that is to take uh, whatever leftover uh, lanolin is still in the fiber because if it has any grease, the dye is not going to get. When you have a greased fiber, the dye is not going to be there. When you wash it, it you will rinse it, uh, the dye together with the grease. But I don't like to do that because for felting fiber, what you need is soap, heat, and movement. And I want to limit as much as possible. Uh, this, this fiber was washed before, so I believe it should be okay in terms of dye. And I rather that it doesn't um, get some of it then to felt. So now the dye is in the pot, the fiber is in the pot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my wood stove and let it warm up for a while. Okay, so um, the water is a little bit warm, it's not hot. Um, and the fiber already had a chance to get um, some of the dye in it. So now I'm going to add the citric acid. 
The citric acid the solution is one cup of citric acid and two cups of water. This is what uh, Debbie Mins uh, told her told in her video, and I like that, so it's easy. That's what I'm doing. And then she uses 10%. Because I have a little bit over 400 grams of fiber here, I'm putting 45 ml. Should be 40, but just to be in the safe side, I put a little bit more, because it looks like a lot of fiber. But the normal would be 10% uh, of the weight. So 40 mLs, I put a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna move the fiber, pour a little bit, move the fiber, pour a little bit, because I want this to be everywhere in the fiber. So I'm moving the fiber a little bit, but because I put the water and the fiber to warm up at the same time, the chances of felting are very slim. So here I have everything there. Just move a little bit, very gently. And now I'm gonna let it uh, warm up. I'm using my wood stove, and the good thing about the wood stove is that uh, the heat is gonna get lower if I don't add any more materials. So I want it to warm up, but I don't want it to boil. You should never let your fiber boil with the dye. So I'm going to cover it and let it simmer. And in a while, I will check the, how the colors are. Um, it's been one hour, and I checked the exhaust. The water now is hot, but as you can see, I still have a lot of dye in the fiber. So the thing is, if you, if you don't exhaust your, your fiber, the dye in the pot, it's harder for you to eliminate it from the fiber itself when you are rinsing it. And it's also bad for the environment. So what I like to do is I get some fiber, extra fiber that I have. So this is 60 grams of uh, Corridale pop that I have. And I'm going to add it there. So this top is dry. It's gonna get not so homogeneous, but it doesn't matter because my point is for it to, to get and absorb the dye that is there. And I'm going to add a little bit more of citric acid to this mix. So I had 60 grams and I added a little bit more. As you can see, the color is pretty nice. It's gonna be lighter when, when it's dry. You can already see, if I take it out a little bit, it gets uh, brighter already, but it's still a very nice color. So, what I'm going to do now is the water is warm, I will just um, take it off the heat and let it cool down completely. While it cools down, it absorbs the rest of the dye in the fiber. It's just that because I had too much, I thought it wasn't going to absorb it all. And I definitely don't want to have a not exhausted dye pot because I don't have a septic tank. I have a um, compost toilet, but I do want to, to have it exhausted anyway. It's better for the environment and it's good for me because I have, I use less water rinsing it. So it's another day. I normally like to do my dyeing at night so that it can rest the whole night. I did it during the day because of the light. But as you can see, the water is completely clear now. I have to confess that after we finished filming, I put more 40 uh, grams of, uh, of my Corridale top 
and I'm glad with that because the water came completely out. Because it has exhausted, I can now just rinse it once. So I put some lucky warm water in my other sink and Empty. And, and here you can see how the dye, of course this was longer in the dye, but how the dye um, gets different colors in different fibers. So this is my Corydale, and this is what I think is a Targi. And the good thing about this is that I always have little bits of Corydale that I dye. I can use that to make socks or I can blend with other colors and have a nicer batch. That. So, just let it go a little bit down. And now I'm going to just press. I love these things that I got once. I don't know where, but I use them quite often as you're going to see. So now I just have some warmer water that I put here. The water was very cold. So I'm not going to be doing many rinses. I'm just doing this rinse. And I'll put it to dry. And that's what I mean by if you add some fiber so that you can exhaust your, your dye completely, you don't have the problem of of having to dye, uh, to rinse it too many times. So what I'm gonna do, because now it's dripping. In the winter, when I lived in Toronto, I used to put it to dry on the top of a, a vent. Like first I let it drip, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm preparing it to drip. Isn't that beautiful? I really love this blue. Um, the other thing is that I'm working on a video on combing and I'm going to use this fiber combed. The reason I'm going to use this fiber combed is that it's full of uh, vegetable matter and also it's a very curly uh, fiber so I think you can even see here how curly it is. Um, and that will be easier for me to open in the comb. So I will leave this, this is my Corydale top, that I can use it as it is. And sometimes if I don't like the color, I can even put it again on another die just to and over dye it and use it to get the dye exhausted again. So, so next is our final time with this project and it is when I am going to show you the fiber dye uh, dry. Okay. So I'm separating the fiber just so that it drips more, that's why I like this one. And I got this at Ikea because the more space the fiber has, more air will go through, faster it will dry. And uh, once I have it, uh, it has dripping enough, I'm going to put in front of my wood stove while I'm still having it on. I'm very happy with this. Take the rest. So, see you in a couple of days.
Okay, so this is the fiber finally all dried. And as you can see, I have here also the Corydale that I put together to finish absorbing the dye, to exhaust all the dye that I had in the pot. Um, <clears throat> so this fiber uh, turned out a beautiful blue. The Corydale turned out a different color, first because it's a different fiber but also because I put it dry in the pot and so the dye just gets first in some areas and not so much in other areas and I'm okay with that. Uh, because it's the same base blue, if I decide, if I don't have much fiber, I can always uh, blend them together. So as you can see, I haven't, uh, I have been playing with it but here you have a bunch of fiber that I have put through the comb to clean up. And again, the color changed a little bit. So what I plan to do is, uh, I'm not using the comb here to have a, a comb preparation. I'm just using it to open up the fiber, take up some of the dirt, because my table now is, is full of dirt just from playing here. Um, and that's it. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye. Isso aqui oh, é um pouquinho de Brasil, yeah, yeah.